I believe we'll be getting started in just a few minutes. If everyone would please come into the sanctuary and find a seat. Thank you. Well, good morning, church. Good morning. I said good morning, church. Good morning. It's a little better. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning here at Solid Rock? It's good to have everyone here. I do want to thank those who are here for uh, Betty Wilson's memorial service this morning. We're honored to be a part of that and to just be there for the family in this time of need. Um, I'll ask you to please stand. If you have a hymn book in front of you, uh, you may find song number 41. I'm going to do the best I can with this with my awesome backup singers, Leela and, and my pretty mama, Donna. Song 41, the song is called Sweet By and By. There's a Most of you do. Find song number 63. This is one of my absolute favorite hymns, if I can get it to hold open for me. I hope I can do it justice because I think Miss Wilson liked this one as well. This song is called What a Day That Will Be. So sing it with us this morning. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye, all is peace. Best 
heart. There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day. day that will be when my Jesus I shall see when I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day I would like to ask some deacons or deaconesses to come forth to help with our morning tithes and offerings this morning. If I could have a volunteer or two, thank you. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. So good to have you here this morning in God's house. Well, today we will celebrate the life of Miss Betty Wilson. And we're thankful for each of you being here this morning in honor of her. And our blessings and our prayers out to each of her family members this morning. And I'm going to ask one accord to come. And we have a song we'd like to share this morning. This is an old favorite, It's Solid Rock. Um, this is a song written by Diane 
Dottie Rambo. Dottie Rambo. Dottie Rambo. I'm sorry. I was, <laughs> her daughter's name was stuck in my head. Dottie Rambo. She wrote so many really good uh, gospel songs. She and she's in glory. So I think Betty's up there playing the piano for her. But um, this song is Build My Mansion Next Door to Jesus. next door to Jesus and tell the angels I'm coming home it doesn't matter who lives around me just so sits near God's throne my mother's mansion may be close by me across the golden avenue she was the Teach me of heaven And the very first one Lord, to tell me of you Build my mansion Next door to Jesus And tell the angels So Reverend Nikki Blanton to come forward for a scripture reading and opening prayer. Let us pray. Holy Christ, we pray for your guidance this day, Lord Jesus. Guide our tongues, Lord Jesus. Make the things that we say and do pleasing in your sight, Holy Lord. We need you, living God. We thank you for your sacrifice, for your holy blood and your Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, help us express this to others, rightly dividing your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
What an opportunity to express the name of Betty Wilson to you. Uh, I happen to uh, know her, and she was a blessing to me. I would say there would be three avenues of uh, kinship that we share. And I guess I'll start with the first one would be the kinship of laughter. Uh, Betty was quite jovial and loved to cut up, and that's just the type of knucklehead I am. I mean person. That's just the type of person I am. And uh, we had a kinship in that regard, no doubt, love to have fun. And the second venue would be music. She could play the piano so well. And uh, let me express this. This is from understanding that God gave me. Music, God sent. Amen. King David said of God that he's the choir master, that he's the chief musician. God sent music. And what a blessing to be in that family. Amen. Amen. A true blessing. And thirdly, and most important of all, I guess the venue we have, the avenue that we share, it's even more than a kinship. It's called family. And it's the family of Christ. And we're blood-bought, and I'm grateful for that. Can't make it one moment in time without Jesus Christ. And Betty knew that. Let me help you understand this. Continuing faith, enduring faith, especially in the face of trials, of pain, of adversity, continuing faith is the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you hear what I'm saying. The Spirit of the Lord was upon Betty. I'm going to share a few verses of Scripture with you. First, I'll be reading a two verses from Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him. I will trust. I'm reading from Romans, the sixth chapter. I'm going to read verses three through five. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be all we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Now I'm going to read. From the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, two verses. The 19th verse and the 51st, 51st verse. The 19th verse first. This is what God's Word says. If in this life we have hope in Christ. I left out a word. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. And the final verse that I want to share with you today. And let me, this is God's word now I'm sharing. This is not, there aren't, these are not my words, all right? This is, comes from the word of the living God. Verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Candy? Many times in my childhood When we've traveled so far By night how weary I've grown 
mother's arms would slip round me so gently he'd say my child we are going home go to hold me Well, I caught a glimpse of that heavenly land Praise God I am gone The twilight has faded And the day soon shall live I get homesick now Farther I roam But my father has led me each step of the way and now I am going home Go to Going home. Amen. Praise God. Love that song. Uh, I'd like to share uh, home going of our dear beloved. Uh, Betty Mae Woodall Wilson, 76. I'm not going to tell her the year she was born. She'll get mad at me. <laughs> As ladies will do. Uh, she went into the presence of the Lord and her reward on Monday, January 19, 2015, Fairmont Crossing in Amherst, Virginia. She was a loving wife of the late Robert Lee Wilson, Sr., of 61 years this year. 61 years. Amen. What a beautiful marriage. Betty was the daughter of the late Walker and Mary Woodall of Appomattox, Virginia. She graduated E.C. Glass High School, Lynchburg, Virginia, and attended Central Virginia Community College in Lynchburg, Virginia. She worked at MedChoice uh, Walk-In Doctor's Office and for the dentist, Dr. Brady, where she retired from. I always ask her questions about teeth stuff, you know, even though she went to dentist, she just knew stuff about all that. It's awesome. Uh, she's left behind to cherish uh, Betty's memories are her two sons, Robert Lee Wilson, Jr., and his wife, Tina, of Lynchburg, Virginia, and Stephen Wayne Wilson, we know Steve, and Lee uh, Wilson, and his wife, Ann, of Amherst, Virginia. Grandchildren, uh, Stephanie Andreas of Lynchburg, Virginia, and Amanda Kawamara, if I pronounced that right, of Evington, Virginia, and four great-grandchildren, Haley McKay, Caitlin Andreas, Sophie Andreas, and Jacob Kawamura, and nieces. So we thank you for her family. It's such a blessing to us as well. Miss Betty uh, loved her horse, Bobby Socks. 
I thought that's a cool name. She loved horses, and she played the piano since she was a child. She was self-taught and played by ear and played piano many places and even here at Solid Rock Church. She played here, and I miss that a lot. I really do. It's a blessing. And she did recordings, too, I believe, of her music. Um, let's see. We truly enjoy and we'll miss her very much for all she's done. Miss Betty loved going to the beach. She liked Myrtle Beach. It's one of her favorite places. Some of her favorite songs was The Lighthouse and The Anchor Holes that Torrance Hedrick sings. And uh, she loved, um, get my writing here, and she played, uh, she loved and played the song Amazing Grace. I loved hearing her play that. Uh, she also passed down her music ability to her sons and grandchildren and to many of us in blessing of her music. Uh, she was a great blessing to us here at Solid Rock to our ladies and sharing out some of her awesome vests and shoes. She bring the coolest things she would share with us. That was a real blessing. She loved Western wear, and I always enjoyed seeing her in her neat Western pocketbooks and jewelry. She was a true lady. She had some cool things. She always had some cool Western wear. And uh, today we celebrate our dear lady. And please, at this time, we'd like for you to come forward and share anything that's on your heart. Uh, anything about Miss Betty and to her family, we invite you. We have a microphone right here. If you could come up, please, that would be great. This time, if you could. I was blessed to get to know Betty through Steve and Ann. Um, after my daddy passed away, I started traveling around with Steve and Torrance and Solid Rock gentlemen and watching them play and Betty would come along. And one of my favorite stories, I'll, I'll take this to my grave. Betty carried a picture of my daddy in a dress. He, he had done as, as a prank. <laughs> and Betty that. told me repeatedly about this picture in her Bible. And one day she caught me here and she got me back in the back. And she said, I want you to see this. And she opens her Bible up and sure enough, there's a picture of my daddy in a dress. <laughs> so <laughs> so it, as hard as it is to let Betty go, I thank God for those memories and, and the time that I got to share, Steve, with you and your mom, with you guys out singing it and praising God. That touched me and that touched my life and know that from this point forward, I carry it with me. Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone else? Come on, <laughs> you got it. Um, as the music minister here at Solid Rock, um, you, you, you meet a lot of different kinds of musicians and artists, and um, many of you have heard us uh, say how thankful we are for the different uh, people in our church that share their music and their mm -hmm. gift of song and gift of music. And yeah. Betty was no exception. She mm -hmm. was definitely one of those. And some of you in the church, I, I, I'm not aware if everyone here has heard her playing and you've heard us talk about it a lot but it really was phenomenal mm -hmm. but it wasn't just the skill it was the heart that she had yes. as she played yeah. and as she shared the music I was not aware that she had taught herself how mm -hmm. to play that's incredible yeah. the the skill that she had you would have thought that she'd gone to school for a long time mm -hmm. for it um, and that's I know good. that she she suffered uh, with health issues a lot in the years that, that I'd gotten to know her um, and so some Sunday she wasn't able to make it, but when, you know, a long time might pass and she was sick, but she was well enough to come to church on Sunday and she'd come up to me, she'd say, Candy, if you need it, I can play the piano today. Mm -hmm. As if it was something that she needed to be shy about mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. keep it away. And I'd be like, Betty, of course you can. Please. I would love if you would play the piano today. You don't know how great that would be for me to have some opening music or something mm -hmm. for the invitation with the piano. I mean, I play a little bit, but I, I would, I'm no Betty Wilson with that. And, um, but the lady, you, you got to give it to her. She had style. Yeah. Yeah. She style. came in. She, oh, yes, um, she she, you know, always looking fabulous. But I always talk about my grandma, her, her mother, that she was mm -hmm. a lady no matter what she wore. Betty Wilson was one of those, too. She shared a lot of jewelry with me, a lot of clothes. Um, I have what they call an ugly sweater that she gave me once. And I can only wear it at Christmas. I don't care what anybody says. I love the sweater. It's beautiful. It's pretty great. It really is great. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not sad for her. I know where she is, and, that, and I'm happy for where she is now. Um, but I am sad for those that she's left behind that we, you know, have her absence here. But I know that one day we'll get to see her again. That's right. Amen. Thank you, sweetheart. Anyone else? Yes. Come on down, sweetheart. I didn't know Betty too well. I wasn't really related to her, but I knew her through Ann, Steve, Amanda, my aunt, cousin, uncle too. 
And I can remember when it was Amanda's birthday party, we rode horses. Mm -hmm. And Uncle Steve took me on it. And when I fell off, Aunt Betty came in there, gave me salt water to help because I busted my cheeks open. Mm -hmm. I can remember one time when Jacob was little. Mm -hmm. She wasn't feeling good. Or they, Aunt Ann and Uncle Steve had left. And we went over there. And I went out there and I helped muck the stalls. I talked to Betty. And I did everything that I could to help. And I can just remember her getting sick, and I'll miss her. Mm -hmm. I loved her to bits, even if I wasn't related to her, really. I mm -hmm. loved her to pieces. And I'm sad to see her go, but I know that she's in a better place. Yeah. She's the kind of lady. Amen. Thank you, sweetheart. Anyone else? It's open for you. Amen. Well, thank you for those, and that was a real blessing. Uh, at this time, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Torrance Hedrick to come up. He's got a special song he's going to share with us this morning. Good morning, everyone. My heart is with my brother right now and my friend. Because I can feel what he's going through, what they're facing. But as for music, yes, she was. She played piano very well. And she passed music down through her family. Steve got it all. I don't know what happened to Lee. <laughs> but in a way, that's just the way life is. <laughs> I have journeyed through the long dark night out on the open seas by faith alone and sight unknown and yet his eyes were watching me the anchor holds though the ship's been better the anchor holds the sails are torn I have fallen on my knees as I faced all the raging seas the anchor holds of the storm I've had visions I've had dreams and I've even held them in my hands Oh, but I never knew They would slip right through Like they were only grains of sand the anchor holds Though the ship's been better The anchor holds Though the sails are torn And I have fallen I faced all 
the raging seas the anchor holds in spite of the storms I have been young but I am older now These eyes have seen But it was in the night Through the storms of my life Oh, that's where God proved His love to me Ships been battered. The anchor holds, though the sails are torn, and I have fallen on my knees as I face. Oh, the raging seas, the anchor holds in spite of the storms. And I have fallen on my knees as I faced for oh, the raging seas, the anchor holds. of the storms. Today we've come together to worship and to praise the Lord and to remember the life of one of his children, namely Sister Betty Wilson. Betty's fight is over. Her race has been won and she has a crown coming to her. Betty is one that loved life. She had a really good sense of humor. And the only 70-some-year-old woman I ever met that had a nose ring. <laughs> she had the attitude of a teenager. That's what kept her looking so young. You could never tell how old she was because of that twinkle in her eye. Dragged me up from the table at a coffee house one night and made me dance with her while Nikki sang Mustang Sally. <laughs> you gotta appreciate things like that, you do. That, that's a person that's young at heart. She loved life. She loved her family. She was a faithful wife that got to see her husband saved. She was a faithful mother. Now I said this the other night in front of them, and I'll say it in front of everybody, she raised two good boys. She really did. She was a good mama. She loved them. She prayed for them all the time. Her grandchildren, too. She used to call me a birth child. I know all the <laughs> awful stuff on y'all. But she made me promise. No, really, they, they were fine. But she, she always would call me to pray for members of her family. She really did. She was a sweet lady. She loved him. i tell you something else. If you don't know Betty, this, you, this, you wouldn't get this, but uh, she was stubborn as a mule. <laughs> oh, you know she was. And, and you know what? That's how women of her generation survived. 
You young mothers could learn a lot from Sister Betty by standing your ground too. That's how you make it in life, is by standing your ground. You gotta be stubborn in this world, you do. She was a fighter. Now the doctors figured she should have passed away a long time ago, but she fought and her sons helped her fight too. And I'm really proud of the effort that everybody put into treating her and working with her and it really helped her a lot and she was tough. But most important, she was a Christian. And there is no legacy, none, that you, that's better that you could leave your family than that. Patrick Henry once said when he was dying, I have nothing to leave my children but Jesus Christ. That's a powerful thing to say. And there in the soul in here that could, could honestly say, Betty won't know Christian. You couldn't say that and, and not be lying. She left Jesus Christ as a legacy to her family. She did. She loved God with all her heart and she accepted Christ as her Savior many years ago and she proved it with her life. I love to hear her play that old piano. That's the only time that it didn't sound out of tune when she got behind it. Well, she's in heaven with family and friends who have gone on. We've got a lot of people from this congregation alone that's up there with her right now. Boy, she is in some real company, I'm telling you. She's well. She's happy. There is no, no pain. There's no cancer. I have learned to despise that word. There is no distress. And so I would have to say this service is more for the family and friends than for her because she's okay. But you know, all through history, people have looked at their lives and they've asked the question, is that all there is? Sometimes you feel that way. Well, I'm here to tell you that that is not all there is, not by any stretch of the imagination. The life that we live down here is very, very short. It's very minute compared to an eternity, and everybody in here will spend an eternity somewhere. Where you spend it is going to be up to you. Betty made the right decision a long time ago. Jesus says this to the family that's here, the friends that are here today. He said it to his disciples and he, back then and he says it to his disciples today in John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. And you know, that's a, that's a tough thing to do with what is going on in this world right now. With all of the distress that we feel. And in a small way, I can relate to this family because my mama is over in a nursing home this morning with not very many days left either, barring a miracle. So I understand what a troubled heart feels like. Most of you in here do too. But you know, Jesus said you don't have to be troubled. And so it's not something that's going to last day in and day out. There, there is a respite from that because you have Christ to lean on. He says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And I do, and I know they do. And I'm here to tell you that in these days, that is about all there is that you can rely on to keep your mind. With all the stuff that goes on in this world and with us each personally. And so Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled, believe in God. You believe in God, believe also in me. And then he tells us certainly that this is not all that there is. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. If you understand the old Jewish customs, what they would do many, many, many years ago was the, the, the groom would become engaged to the bride and then he would go back to his father's house and build a mansion onto his father's house. If the father had a lot of children, he had one big sprawling house when it was over. 
And see, that's what Jesus is doing for each of us that know him. He is building on to his father's house today. And when your mansion is ready, he's going to come and get you. We never know when it's going to be ready. Only he does. One of these days, he's coming back for all of his church. But he said, in my father's house or many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And it is a place to where there's no more pain, no crying, no sorrow, none of those things. And he said, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And I will receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. In the presence of Jesus, there is no sorrow. There is no cancer. There is no heart disease. There's none of those things because you will spend an eternity in the presence of the great physician himself. And that is where Betty is this morning. And he told his disciples, he said, and where I go, you know, and the way, you know. And then there's always the one in the crowd that's got to, I guess he's from Missouri, the show me state. You got to prove something to me. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you go. And how can we know the way? And just like he told his disciples 2,000 years ago, he's telling us this morning, Jesus said to him, I am the way. The truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no church membership. There is no baptisms or anything that can get you to the Father. Only through Jesus Christ can you do that. And Betty knew that only too well. And that's how she got to the Father. And that's the only way that anyone in here can get to the Father is through Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that every hair of your head is numbered. For some of us, that's a tall order, and for some of us, it would be pretty easy. But the Bible says that not even a sparrow can fall to the ground without your heavenly father knowing about it. That's amazing. Think about that. Nothing gets past God. Your sickness, your death, your struggles, he sees them all. So I'm saying today that what you guys are going through matters to God. The pain that you feel, the loss that you feel, it matters. Jesus had a loved one who died named Lazarus. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were three of his friends that he would go and see whenever the disciples were getting on his nerves. And that's probably true. Whenever he needed a break from all of the ministry work, even being God the Son out there, he needed a break. So he went to visit with them, and now Lazarus has died, and Jesus was four days away. So does he understand death and loss? Absolutely he understands. The Bible says that we've got a high priest that has been touched with everything that we feel, Every infirmity that we've ever had and so in John chapter 11 Jesus returns to the little town of Bethany where his friend had died and where he had already been buried and Jesus goes up to them and he says your brother shall rise again and Martha made the statement to him. She says, oh, I know that he'll rise again in the resurrection of the last day. But Jesus said this to her, and he's saying this to the Wilson family today. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. So even though 
one of our loved ones passes away that knows if they know Christ, whether they're cremated, whether they're buried, or whatever uh, happens to them, even though the world thinks they are dead, they are alive today. And then he said, Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And then he asked Martha the question, Believest thou this? That's the question that is asked to you today. Do you believe that as well? So then Jesus asked them to take him to the grave. And he said, where have you laid him? And they said, Lord, come and see. And the shortest verse in the Bible is John chapter 11. and verse number 35, it said, Jesus wept. Does anybody understand how you feel? Yes, somebody does understand. If another, not another soul in this building understood, Jesus does. He wept at the grave of his friend Lazarus. Regardless of the power that he had, it still touched his heart. A lot of Bible scholars that are smarter than me said that Jesus wept not because Lazarus had died, but because he was going to have to bring him back into this world. That may be true. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? So Jesus went to the grave and he made this statement. Take away the stone. It was a sepulcher up inside of solid rock that had, and I like that, how about that, solid rock, and it had a, a stone rolled right across the entrance where no one could go in and certainly no one could come out. But he said, take away the stone. That's the first thing if you want to see Jesus is you need to roll that stone away from that heart of yours and allow him in. Many of us have gotten cold and calloused over the events of our lives over the last years or decades. But if you want Christ to come in, you've got to make yourself open and you've got to roll that stone away from your heart. And then there's Martha. She's going to argue the point. She said, Lord, by this time he stinks for he's been dead four days. I like that. You know what? Jesus don't care if you stink. <laughs> he don't. And you know, some of us, our lives stink. We've lived in sin for so long, we stink. You know what? Jesus don't care. He wants to fix this for you no matter how bad it is. And Jesus said, didn't I tell you that if you, would, that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and prayed, and he says, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. And I knew that you hear me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that you have sent me. And then he said this right here with a loud voice. It said, when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice. Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus said to him, Loose him and let him go. On that wee hours of the morning, a Monday morning, a couple of weeks ago, in that nursing home, Jesus sent his angels and said, go down there, loose her, let her go. And they did. No longer is she in a body of suffering and pain, but she is free and she is whole in the presence of the Lord. But you've got to do something to get to that point. That is, you've got to admit before God that you can't do this by yourself 
You've got to admit before God that you are a sinner and that you accept what Christ did for you on the cross of Calvary when he took your place and paid for your sins. And from that very moment that you acknowledge him as your Lord and Savior, you are free indeed. You've already been loosed. But even better than that, when it comes time to die, you will never be alone. You will be immediately from this old body to the presence of God and free forever. But if you want to see Sister Betty again, that's the only way it can happen. You got to do what she did. You got to come by way of the cross. You've got to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Plus nothing, minus nothing. And you'll get to see what she's seeing right now at this moment. Shall we bow our heads for prayer, please? Right now is a very, very, very crucial 